that that Paramatma that we have become face to face with in the second love, that Paramatma Vaheguru that we have become a Bairagi as we've fallen out of love with the world in the third stage, we have now in this fourth stage met that Lord and become one with that Lord. Just as the streams will flow into the ocean and cannot be said to be a stream again, just as the water that merges with the ocean cannot be separated back out, this isn't a stale path. This isn't a place devoid of love. In fact, such a mitas, such a sweetness will become blossoming within you. Maharaj says, Satche, that true Lord, set thee with them, Ratiya. You won't get to see them, you won't get to be their friend, you become one with them. This is such a blessing, Guru Pyari Sahad Sangaji. Satnam Sri Vahe Guru Har Chauthari Lav Man Sahaj Paya Har Paya Bal Ram Jiyo Gur Mukh Milaya Supaye Har Man Tan Meetha Laya Bal Ram Jiyo Har Meetha Laya Mere Prab Paya An Din Har Liv Lai Man Chindya Fal Paya Swami Har Naam Vajji Vadai Har Prab Thakur Kaj Rachaya Tan Hirda Naam Vigasi Jan Nanak Bole Chauthi Lava Har Paya Prab Avanasi Har Prab Thakur Kaj Rachaya Tan Hirda Naam Vigasi Jan Nanak Bole Chauthi Lava Har Paya Prab Avanasi Har Chauthari Lava Man Sahaj Paya Har Paya Bal Ram Jiyo Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh Param Sarkar Yog Guru Khalsa Saad Sangat Ji We're all blessed to be in the company of Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj As they've brought us here together on this journey that Jagyasu, one whose asara, one whose desire it was to jag, to wake from this world, came into the sanctuary of Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj and begged Maharaj be show us the way, show us Santaka Marga Taram Ki Pori Ko Vadapa Pai, show us that path that we must walk, the steps, the Pumika that we must undertake, that we heard of that father who was being extorted by that Pandit, saying to Maharaj, give us a way that we can join our children in union before you Maharaj, so that we don't have to go to anyone else. And in response to both of those Ardasa, both of those supplications, that Maharaj would draw from the heavens, this Bani named Suhi Mahalla Chotha. Suhi Mahalla Chotha being the name of the Shabbat, this gift that allows the soul brides to join in union with their husband lords to get married but it allows both husbands and wives to also marry that Paramatma Vaiguru in the third stage I've been told by the Sangat that we should do a short summary recap in that third stage of spiritual awakening Guru Maharaj explains to us that in Tanumansa, in this third stage, having gone through Shubh Icha and Shubh Vicharna, and now in Tanumansa, that the mind is completely enlightened as we have entered the state of Bairag. We've become a Bairagi. Haratijiri Lav Manachau Paya Bairagiya Balaramjiu. Maharaj explained to us 
that having fallen out of the clutches of this world, having fallen out of the clutches of Maya, that we are now able to fall truly in love without anything holding us back with our husband Lord. And then having now decided that there's nothing else in this world that is going to satisfy that burning desire to become one with our Maker, with that one that has organized our lives, who has given us life in the first instance, and one who will deliver us back unto themselves. We seek out the company of those great saints that can show us the way that have already forged the path. We heard that beautiful part of our history of Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj meeting the Sangat, the Kabul Sangat, and providing them the way out of their difficulties as they were struggling on that path from Afghanistan to Punjab. We heard that Guru Arjan Dev Ji himself were the ones that would massage the feet of those that were walking the path and that in fact when the Sangat would reach the Rabar Sahib seeking out the Guru that the Guru themselves were cleaning their jore as they would go into the Darbar Santa Jana Harumel Harapaya in this way having jor with the Sangat having come together in the Sangat they have now found their way to their husband Lord Guru Pyari Sad Sangat Ji as is always the case, we find those beautiful things when we least expect it. And we're going to hear more about that in this fourth love. But as I was reading, as I was doing the research, undertaking that course, I read from Sant Maskeen something so beautiful that I have to share it with you now. That Sant Maskeen would say, such a beautiful way to illustrate the power of what it means to come together in the Sangat. They say that if a Droplet of water falls upon a mountain top. It cannot by itself reach the ocean, for the earth would absorb it. And its journey might be a few centimeters on that path before, ah, no, it's no more. For a drop of water to fall upon a mountain top and reach that destination, it needs to join together with more. And in this way, the most starving of earths, the most dried of earth cannot stop that gush of water, that flash flood that will appear when those droplets come together. And as we have seen in those documentaries of those flat plains of Africa, that even that earth which is scorched and cracked, that when the water travels together in the form of the Sangat, that nothing will absorb it. That Maya, which is here, ever elusive, but always present without any teeth eating away at us. Maya Mamta Mohini Jin Vinadanta Jag Khaya Manmuk Khade Gurmukha Ubre It will eat away at everybody else, but not those Gurmuks that have come together. Jini Satchanam Chitlaya So in this third love, Santa Jana Harmel Harpaya Vada Bhagya Balaramjo Nirmal Harpaya Harugun Gaya Mukboli Harbani Maharaj went on to say that as you find your true Lord, that your Boli will change. We'll recognize who those saintly people are because of the way that they speak, the things that they choose to say. And I gave an example of a Gurmukh who had the opportunity to take advantage but chose not to and sacrificed their own advantage that the day and the family of another's should not be ruined. And so this is the stage of Tanu Mansa, having undertaken that true reflection, Shubh Vicharna, upon that Shubh Icha working backwards from the beginning now. Now we reach this fourth stage in spiritual awakening, Sattvapat. And this fourth stage, Sattvapat, meaning that path, that place of truth, the truth is now all that resides. Satchakanda Vase Nirankara. In that place now, only the truth, in that realm of truth, is now where the Gurmukh has become present. And in this fourth stage in spiritual awakening, Sant Hari Singh Ji in Gurbani Artha Pandar explains that this is also known as Turiyapad 
that fourth state, that fourth state of consciousness, or we can say what perhaps we are most commonly referred to it as being Sehejavasta. And now, with the blessings of Guru Maharaj, we now undertake this journey together. Let's go together now and experience what it is to enter this fourth stage of spiritual awakening. Hanji. Hare Chauthari Lave. In this fourth stage, in this fourth love, love, again, just to remind us, means Bharatkarma, which is why the bride and the groom collectively as soul brides encircle the husband lord. This Bharatkarma, this Bharatkarma, it could also mean Sikhya, to take the teachings of the Guru, to put the Guru's teachings at the center of our life. This Pumbika, this step in spiritual awakening, this Laggan, where we are joining with the Guru. In this way, Harachotri love, meaning that in this fourth stage of spiritual awakening, Hanji, Man sahaj paya. that we have, we have reached that highest state of Avastha, that place where the Brahmanis reside. Man sahaj paya, sahaj, meaning that state of complete stillness. Insofar as our mind is working within this world of this illusion, it's trapped by this illusion. Insofar as this illusion is no longer tugging away at us because we are no longer allowing those claws into our mind, they say, We almost can fleet upon these words in the morning and not really reflect on what Maharaj is actually giving us. Those bhagats, those true Brahmyanis, they are forever sadavigas in a state of complete bliss. Why? Because their mind is in Sehej. They are no longer, a, they are no longer perhaps like me, going to be knocked left if we're struck with a right punch or knocked right if we're struck with a left hook. Because they are beyond the physical ailments of this world. And so whatever will come will just come and it will pass. And in this way, we can say Man Sehej. There's a stillness now that no wind can blow, that no thunder can rock and no earth can shake. For from every direction, these ones are protected. From all four directions, in every way now, there's a kushti sense of that it's all good. For these elements are the elements of the world, and those bhagats are now in a state of sehej beyond this world. I'll say that again. The elements which we suffer are ailments of this world. But the bhagats are beyond this world, and so nanak bhagata sadavigas. In this way, har chotri lav manas sehaj paya, that the mind now has become completely still. Paya meaning hoya, meaning happened, hanji. Har paya. Because why? Why is it that the mind is so still? Because the, the mind is so still, because now the heart has found God. The mind is only in control when the heart is not connected. Now that the heart has become connected to that Paramatma that we have completely fallen in love with, as we've just done so in the third stage. We've already met God. They have now presented themselves to us and yo, we are in love. From a place of love, therefore, this has happened. And in this way, Har Chautri Lav Manas Sehej Paya Har Paya Balaram Ji Hanji Balaram Ji So now, this Ram, this one which is Rambia Hoya, that is out bursting, bursting out of every part and particle of creation. But whilst they are present before us, they cannot be seen by us because our minds are running around everywhere that we can't appreciate the sunrise. Now, we are truly balihar. Now we are a sacrifice, bal, coming from the word balihar. We are a sacrifice to that one because now they are before us and our mind is still and we can look at that sunrise and cry tears of joy as that sun is rising. I'm not talking about a sunrise at the end of the valley. I'm talking about that sun rising and blossoming from within, which we spoke about at the end yesterday. Viprabha that that one which is nashtoret, which is beyond any destruction, has made their home within our own being, Gar Mehebaya. That Lord which we seek is now blossoming from within, and you're realizing that, yo, actually, you are with me all the time. 
Maharaj is explaining now, Guru Mukha Milya Subhai. So Guru Sahib is explaining to us in this fourth stage of spiritual awakening that you are now a Guru Mukh. Maharaj now uses the word Guru Mukh. We say this word again so flippantly sometimes, but what does it actually mean? They are the one who is Sanamukh, they are constantly facing towards the Guru. Guru Mukha Milya Subhai. And in this way, through intuitive ease, Subhai meaning without any effort, without any effort whatsoever, that one now has become one with God. Guru Mukh Milya Subhai, Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, at the time of Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, a sect came, their name was by Guru Mukh, as chance would have it. Actually, probably there's no chance in any of this. This was all probably written before time began. We can take chance out of this entirely. As time would give us, we can say, a Gurmukh by the name of Bhai Gurmukh goes to see Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj. They say to Maharaj, Maharaj, I much desire to have darshan, to have sight of a Brahm Gyani. Can you tell us where could I go to seek out one who is referred to as a Brahm Gyani? In your city, Sukhmani Sahib, you devote a whole Ashtapati to that one who's a Brahm Gyani. Let us have darshan of a Brahm Gyani. I much desire this. And so Guru Arjan Dev Ji, always the fulfiller of all the requests of the heart, they say to Bhai Gurmak, go to the house of my Gurusik, go to the house of Bhai Pikari Ji. And in this way, you can have darshan and you'll see what it means to be a Brahm Gyani. So just keep that in your mind as we undertake uh, this journey of this part of history. So Bhai Gurumukh goes to the house of Bhai Bikari in Kashmir. And they go and they go to see this Gurumukh expecting perhaps their own mind's expectations of what they're going to see. And they go to the house of Bhai Bikari and they go forward and they see Bhai Bikari sitting in the room of the house and they're stitching together two sheets. They're stitching sheets together. They recognize that there's a lot of ronak, there's a lot of movement in the house. People are moving to and fro, there's an excitement in the house. Why? Because Bhai Bikari's son is getting married. And so that time of the house is filled with that anand, the garaj, because everybody is excited about there to be a wedding in the house. And Bhai Gurmak says to Bhai Bikari, to Bhai Bikari, I've been sent by Guru Arjun Dev Ji. Immediately, Bhai Gurmak gets out of their chair and they give Bhai Bikari Ji gets out of their chair and they give Bhai Gurmukh a big hug. But they recognize that this is a sect of the Guru. Just a quick pause there for a second. This is written in our history. Our history can teach us so much. How do we receive each other as brothers? How do we achieve, achieve, how do we receive each other as sisters? In our Itihas it is written by those great scholars, by those great saints, that as soon as the name of Guru Arjan Dev Ji would come upon the lips of that visitor into the house of this sect, he stands up and goes, you've come from the light of Guru Arjan Dev Ji, please, how can I serve you? So, Bhai Gurmukh is given the tour of the house by the host. And as he goes from room to room and he sees the celebrations being put in order and the garage of the house being put to task, he walks past one room and he sees some wood collected up there and some samagri which is what we would order, like some fragrance and some saints, scents that would ordinarily be used in a funeral, part of a funeral pyre. And Bhai Gurmukh asks, what is this? And he goes, when the time is correct, you'll come to know. At this point, Bhai Gurmukh in their mind, they're thinking, what, what kind of a Brahmgyani is this? This is not what he's engaging in family affairs. This is just a normal house. There's a wedding taking place. The ladies of the house are singing folk songs. There's much merriment undertaken but no different to any other house that I can see. And perhaps confusion and doubt is entering the mind of this Bhai Gurmukh. The wedding, come, the wedding day comes and much merriment is taking place. The women of the house are singing songs and there's dancing and all sorts of activities are taking place in the keeping of a traditional wedding. Two days pass and the son of Bhai Bikari begins to develop a lot of pain in his stomach. And after two days, it's written in our Itihas, our history, that he passes away. And when this happens, 
those, those, those same women that were singing songs of happiness, they're now crying tears of sadness and they're crying out outwardly to the heavens. Those women that were so high, those people that were so high are now so low. And by Bakariji goes into that room and brings out the wood, the lakar that was there and makes a funeral pyre in the courtyard of their own home. They place their son upon that and those two sheets that they were stitching, one is placed upon the body of their son and the other is placed upon the floor of the Sangat to sit. Bhai Gurmukh looks and says, what is this? You knew that your son was going to pass. What, what is this? That you knew that your, you knew the hukum of the Lord, for this is what it means to be a Brahmjani. To not necessarily just know the future, but to man and be a complete acceptance of the way of the world, of the way of the Lord. To know that which is going to happen will occur, but for that tilt still to be sweet within your mind. Because for a Gurmukh, it's not the power to change things. It's not the power to have control, for that is the place of the world, that is the place of ego and home in the world. But for one to understand and accept that this is the will of Akal Puruk and to always be and forever be in acceptance of this. By Bakadiji would give the teachings, they would go on to say that there is what is the point of going to places of pilgrimage when we don't understand that Jatara which is to take place with our own being. They would give this teaching that the highest state of being is to be in acceptance of the will of the Lord. And so for a Gurmuk, Milya Sobai, where there's almost complete surrender, and there's almost complete surrender as we realize that all things are being done, not by our own actions in this fourth stage. At the beginning, yes, going back four days to Monday, Shubh Icha, that desire to undertake good intentions. Yes, but at this stage, we're realizing that actually Maharaja Sita Koshwani Karasagda is all by your kirpa, it's all by your blessings that we can undertake any karaj. And in this way, it becomes effortless. Again, we go to the teachings of Sant Maskeen, whose words are so sweet to our minds. They say, we don't do breathing, do we? It just happens. We don't do heart beating. We don't sit here and do the task of beating the heart or pumping the lungs. This just happens. But we don't credit that to the source from which that power, that Shakti is driven. The heart beats a hundred thousand times a day. Effortless, effortlessly. My brother here, Baikanaya, runs 45 kilometers on a Saturday. <laughs> you know, the heart is beating for him maybe 200,000 times on that day. But we don't think of the heart, even in those exertions, we don't think of the heart. We don't think of the lungs. We don't do breathing. We don't do blood circulation. Listen, we don't do them, but Gurumukh Milya Subai, be intuitively, naturally, these things already occur upon us. And then in this stage of spiritual awakening, whilst we can accept our biology of what we've just said, in the high state of spiritual awakening, we realize that even our hands and our feet are being done. Hence the teachings of that same great Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj Bhi Nanak Ki Prabh Bhenti Apani Pagati Lai Asi Koshwani Kar Sakte Maharaj Apani Pagati Lai Attach me to the ability to worship you Maharaj, I can't attach myself to you Be attach me to you Make me one with you Guru Mukh Milya Subhai Guru Pyari Saad Sangat Ji What does it mean to reach such a state Where your joining with God becomes effortless that which seems to be so difficult, perhaps the highest goal, the highest price that we can, the highest reward that we can receive is to become mukt from this world. How can we juxtapose that against the idea that it needs no effort? How can it be the highest place to reach and yet we reach there without any effort whatsoever? Because Guru Pihari Sad Sangaji, it's not saying that we're not going to make effort because Maharaj explains to us, Udum kare pal ke parabati, Udum kare, that sick is one who makes that Udum to wake. And have Isnan Udum Kare Palke Parbati Isnan Kare Amrit Sad Nave. Maharaj explains to us it's just that when you get higher and higher, then you realize as you reach higher and higher that Balaramji or that whom we become a sacrifice to, they are the ones that are going to be undertaking these actions with us. As we become closer and closer to that ocean, then that river that we spoke of that Sant Maskeen had mentioned, then that river, need, river needs no effort whatsoever. The momentum of that river, in fact, cannot be stopped. 
and that power of water as it's come together and is now reaching the ocean. We spoke of the droplet falling upon the mountain top, having no chance at all without the company of others. But now, as that river is reaching down and about to merge into that ocean of love, that droplet that now seemed to have no chance and needed all the efforts in the world to just make it, now it cannot be stopped. And in this way, no efforts of that water is required to flow. No efforts of that river is required to be undertaken as it reaches that ocean of love and is about to become lean and become one with Paramatma Vaheguru. Guru Mukha Milya Sobai. In this way, Hanji. Har man tan meetha laya. In this way, what happens? What is Maharaj? They give us such a treat. They give us an insight. They say at this point, when you have reached this state of avasta, Shob Icha, Shob Vicharna, Tanu Mansa, Sattvapat, in this fourth state of complete truth, Sattvapat, this place of truth now, what happens in this place of truth? Har manatan mita laya. Your man, your mind, your tan, your body becomes completely filled with a sweetness. Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, we think about this path, at least in some ways as we try and join with it during the course of our lives, we think of this path at least in some ways as something we've got to restrict ourselves to. Like, I've got to try and do this. I have to try and stop doing this. And it becomes quite prescriptive. But Maharaj is explaining to us, this isn't in any way a restriction. It in fact is a way to release us, to allow us to experience ultimate bliss. Current speakers of the day, they speak about the difference between trying to push something very heavy and trying to pull yourself towards something. And this is such a powerful anecdote. You can't imagine that you can push something so heavy. But if that reward is so great and we think of the reward, rather than trying to push ourselves over the edge, if we think about how great that reward is going to be, that mitas that we're going to experience, and that becomes our focus, then the activity to get us there becomes just a side thing to concentrate upon. If we're constantly focusing on the goal, then the steps to get there will become an easy thing to, to traverse. But if we focus solely on the steps you've got to take without thought of what we're going to receive or what difficulties we're going to be escaped, we're going to escape, then that is where the problem occurs. And Maharaj is saying to us, yo, this isn't a stale path. This isn't a place devoid of love. In fact, Haram Manatan Mita Laya Balaramju. In this way, such a mitas, such a sweetness will become blossoming within you. And this isn't just the first time. Maharaj speaks about this countless times across Gurbani. Maharaj says, Mite Har Gungao Jindu. Tu Mite Har Gungao. Just speak the sweet name of the Lord. Sache Seti Ratiya Milia Nitave Tao. They say, Oh, that one that sits before me, that feels so guilty inside. Oh, that one that sits before me, that considers himself unworthy to walk this path. That one who has no talent, that one who is unworthy in their own considerations to be here. What will happen to you if you sing that sweet Lord's name? Be sache seti ratiya. You'll become one with that Lord, which is exactly what this fourth love is all about. Mara says, sache that true Lord, Seti with them, Ratiya. You won't get to see them, you won't get to be their friend, you become one with them. This is such a blessing, Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji. I don't wish to denigrate any other faith, but oftentimes the only way we can understand the beauty of what Maharaj has given us is by comparison to just see how beautiful this Sikya is. In the Abrahamic faiths, in for example Christianity and the Islamic faith, they speak about you getting to go to a place, a heavenly place. When you die, that you get to, on the day of judgment, that the curtains will get rolled back and you'll come back to life from your grave. And in this way, you'll get to go to a heavenly place, depending on your actions, where there'll be many rewards. This form of transactional worship, I have great difficulty with. It suggests that there's some sort of a shopkeeper and then in response to what you do, you'll get something in return. And this for me isn't a place of love. And this for me isn't a place of selflessness, which is all of what Sikhi is all about. So Maharaj is explaining to us, you don't get to see God, you don't get to go to that place, you get to become one with your husband, Lord. Satche Seti Rattiya. Sare Japo Rattiya. 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 We can say Leena. 
Lina. Lean literally means to merge with. As water becomes water, as we will see, just as a, that ocean which Santa Maskeen st st started speaking about being that droplet, that ocean now we're traveling together, together. Don't forget about that ocean, that, that, that water traveling. Just as water flows from that stream into water, Nanak Lean Payogo Bindisyo, Jo Pani Sang Pani. Maharaj explains to us, Nome Pacha, Sahib Siri Guru, Tegh Bahadur Ji Maharaj explains to us, Nanak Lean Payogo Bindisyo, that you will merge with that Gobind, that God, that Paramatma. Kidna Jo Pani Sang Pani, the way that water goes with God. Where else? is the entitlement to become one with God on the game on the table of the game which other game of love is there out there upon the table of which for those gurmukhs for those saints is there the opportunity to merge with your beloved what else would we want what other place do we want to go to what other table do we want to play at what other game of love is there out there that will entice us to give up our whole life to dedicate ourselves to if not to become one with our husband Lord. I'm going to say that again. Only in the house of Guru Nanak, only in the house of Guru Nanak is the game of love one which allows you to become one with God Himself. Vahe Guru 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 Guru Nanak Bacha went into the Vain Nadi. They came out from the heavens many days later, three days later. Many had thought they had passed from this world. And they bring from the heavens the Mool Mantar, a gift to us all. That Mool Mantar, that, the recitation of which removes that veil of separation, removes that Homme that allows us to become one with them. Guru Nanak Bacha has come back from the Vain Nadi and they now stand before our mother, Mata Salakani. And they say, I, know, I've now, I now know what I must do. I must go into this world to spread this message of truth that has been given to me by my Guru. Who was Guru Nanak Pacha's Guru, the Shabbat themselves? Who was Paramatma's Guru? Who was Guru Nanak Devji's Guru, the Shabbat themselves? Who was Guru Nanak Devji's Guru? Vahi Guru. Guru Nanak Pacha explains that I had no job and I was given this task. I was entasked in this way. Guru Nanak Pacha stands before their wife and they say, I must go now. Mata Salakani, she says, why can't you just do things ordinary, man? Why can't you just, if you want to do prayers, you can stay in the village and just stay. I just want your physical company. Be, why have you got to go? Why can't every, why can't everything why can't anything just be ordinary? You didn't get married around the fire. You got married around the Shabbat. And all these things that you do is different. But can't you just stay? Baba Lakshmi Das are wrapped around the feet, the knees, the legs of Guru Nanak Bacha. They're crying their eyes out, saying probably words akin to Daddy don't go. And Guru Nanak Bacha looks into the loving eyes. Can you imagine what it would have been like to receive that Najari? that glimpse, that glance of grace from Guru Nanak Bacha, we need not imagine if we look into the angs of the Guru, but perchance they would become pargat before us in their physical form and sit before us in a way that us muraks could see. Can you imagine as Guru Nanak Bacha looks into the eyes of Baba Siri Chan, Baba Lakhmi Das? Mata Salakhani Ji is saying, we look at your children, they're crying their eyes out and just stay. Guru Nanak Bacha says, you can see the cries of your two sons. You can hear the cries of your two sons, but you can't hear the cries of the whole world. The whole world is crying out in pain. Suni Pukar Datar Prabh, Guru Nanak Jag, Mahi Bataya. Says Bhai Gurdas Ji, Suni Pukar, hearing the cries of the world. Suni Pukar Datar Prabh, Guru Nanak Jag, 
Mahi Bhattaya, it was in response. Hearing the cries of the world, the pains of the world, the Mahatarati being weighed down by the sins of all those that lacked gratitude, that lacked the Guru Mantar, that Mantar of appreciation. The Mahatarati, the, the earth is crying out quite literally, Suri Pukar, hearing the cries, Dhatar, that great giver, Prabha, came down into the earth in the form of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. Guru Maharaj says to their, their wife, but you can see the cries of your children, but you can't see the cries of the whole world's children crying out. And I go forth now to give them the way. Martha Salakaniji hears these words and she goes quiet. Another voice is heard, very quiet, a very pure voice. Nirmal Harpaya Harugungaya Mukaboli Harvani. From yesterday, we heard that when you meet God, you become that Bedagi, your voice becomes very quiet and soft and you become speaking from a place of purity. A voice speaks out, what will I do? How will I see you? I live to have your darshan. Oh brother, how will I have darshan of you now? Who was it that was speaking now? Our beloved Bebe Nanaki, the sister of Guru Nanak, the elder sister the first, in fact, to recognize who Guru Nanak Bhatia was on this earth. Guru Nanak Bhatia turns to their sister now and says, Oh, you, my beloved sister, you who speaks with so much love, when you think of me, close your eyes. And when you think of me, you turn around and I will be there. And Guru Nanak Pacha would go with Bhai Mardana and they, we'd, we would know from our history that they would travel the world and they would bring the teachings of Daya through the Langar. They would bring the teachings of Santok, compassion through the Gurmantar in this way. All that we really need is in what we just said there. Daya through Langar and Santok through Simran. But we complicate our lives so much, a different conversation perhaps for another day. Guru Nanak Pacha would travel with Bhai Mardana, Ik Baba Akal Rupa, Durja Rababi Mardana, as Bhai Gurdasti describes it, what a duet, what a pair. <laughs> Guru Nanak Pacha, the form of God, and in their company, Bhai Mardana, they would travel the world, solving the world's problems and bringing that truth and taking away that pain. And Bibi Nanaki is sitting in her house one day and she's thinking, I miss my brother, man. Jalo, I remember what he said. Let's try this. And she sits down. She closes her eyes and she thinks of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. She puts her, she, man, she mechanically puts a thought in her mind of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. She closes her eyes and she opens her eyes and lo and behold, there's nobody there. <laughs> and she says, I don't understand. And she does it again and there's nobody there. And once more and many times thereafter, she closes her eyes, she looks around in every direction and there's nobody there. The next day she wakes, perhaps humbled by what's occurred, and she sits down again, this time. And she really concentrates on Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. She closes her eyes, and after some time she opens her eyes slowly. And there's nobody there. <laughs> and in her mind, such thoughts come to mind that there's such a teaching for us, such a teaching for all of us, she says, my Guru Nanak Bacha doesn't lie. This, treat, this teaching, this Sikhya that they've given me, this treasure that they've given me is true. But I must be doing something wrong. There must be some shortcoming in my own efforts, such as to not bring about that which has been promised to me. So this must be within me. I must look inwardly to see. What teaching is this? In this simplicity, we can, meet, we can, we can lose so much that would avoid so much difficulties in our own houses in our own households, we're so quick to blame. Maharaj says, Jo ma kiya, so ma paya, dos na dije, avarjana. Jo ma kiya, whatever I have done, so ma paya, that's what I'm getting. Whatever I have done is in directly a consequence of what I'm receiving. Dos na dije, avarjana. I'm not blaming anybody else for my circumstance. This is so empowering. Empowering, you might say. How is it empowering? You, what you're essentially saying, Amandeep, is that I'm responsible for everything going wrong in my life. No, if that's where your state of mind is, we can look at that. What Maharaj is saying is that, yo, you're in charge. Really empowering. 
Maharaj is saying to you that insofar as you externalize your circumstance to somebody else, insofar as you externalize your heart, your condition to somebody else who you can't control, then you cannot change your circumstance. But if we accept that where I am right now and whatever difficulties I'm facing is a response of what I am and what I am doing, you can change that immediately and that is why it's so empowering. Guru Pyari Sad Sangaji, oftentimes we live in a pit and we can spend decades in that pit just sloshing around in the dirt and we can stay there with a safe excuse that it's somebody else's fault while I'm here. And we can use all the justifications in the world to keep ourselves there. We can fail with a really good excuse or we can just succeed. It's entirely up to us. We can fail with a good excuse. No one's going to blame you. What, what's that social media? No one's coming for you. <laughs> yeah? We can fail with a good excuse or we can just succeed. Guru Maharaj explained to us, Jo ma kiya, so ma paya, dos na dije avar jana. Guru Nanak Dev Ji's sister, Bibba Nanaki, she's saying, Chalo, my brother doesn't tell any lies. In him exists only the truth. There must be something in me, Chalo. And her sharda is not broken even a slight bit. And in this way, she carries on with her dhyan. And then one day, she's making prasad there. She's making ruti in her house for her husband, Baba Jairam, who had so much love for Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. And he, she's making prasad there. And one day, these prasad there blossom and they bloom up in such a way. And Guru Nanak Pacha is hundreds of miles away. Pointless distance we couldn't measure. So far away is now Guru Nanak Dev Ji, it would take months for them to return. And Bebe Nanaki Ji is making prasad there and the prasad blossoms up beautifully. And she thinks, oh wow, this is such perfectly formed, beautiful prasad If only my brother was here, that I could serve him. I would love so much within my heart for him to be here. If only he was here and that catch of Prem reached across the world and held upon to the feet of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. Guru Nanak Pacha turns to Mardana and says, Mardaniya, Prem di catch pegya menu. That the, the strings of love have gotten hold of me. Cholopachaliya. And in a moment, in a nimak, in a chit, Guru Maharaj. You hear the turning of the door to the house of Bebe Nanaki and we, Guru Nanak Pachaji comes into the house and says, bo, bok bam. Make me some prasad there. She walks into the house. What effort was this that Bebe Nanaki undertook? No effort whatsoever. Guru Mukhamilya Subai. Effortless, intuitive ease. Guru Mukhamilya Subai. And in this way, her whole body, her whole mind is completely filled with bliss. Such a sweetness is born forth. Bibbe Nanaki's head is slightly down. This isn't a Bibbe saying that I've, she's not, her head is not up with pride, that look, I've fulfilled my own efforts. This isn't a Bibbe who's saying, Acha, mate, I've got an A plus on that, and I put my tiyan on you and you've come. The head is, Bibbe Nanaki, is just to the side. Just as Guru Gobind Singh was when I was Sanamukh to Paramatma Vaiguru, Thar Payo Me Jor Kar Bachan Kaha Sirenya Hai, Panta Chale Tab Jagat Me Jab Tum Kuro Sahai. Only by your blessings, Maharaj, can this Pant be achieved upon this earth. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, in the same way, is saying, because they're the form of God, we ask the Koshwani Kar Sakra, Maharaj, by your blessings, Guru Mukhamilya Supai, effortlessly I will be victorious. Effortlessly, Guru Maharaj is saying this to us. Guru Mukh Milya Subhai Har Manatan Mita Laya Balaram Jiyo If we can reach this stage of Avasta through going through that mechanical process of Shubh Icha, having that great desire Shubh Vicharna, meditating and contemplating upon that teaching that we can become compassionate in this way we will enter that stage of Bairag in that third stage where we are no longer attached to this world and then in Sattva path we realize actually we ain't done anything I see the question, we, we've done nothing. Not only have we done nothing, but we actually are nothing. We're just a droplet, worthless without other droplets coming together. And in this way, Hanji. Har meetha laya, mere prab paya. In this way, Har meetha laya, in this state of complete sweetness, 
मेरे प्रभ पाया देन आवर लोड पाया नाव इन दिस कॉन्टेक्सट मीन्स माई लोड इज प्लीजिंग टू मी गुरु महाराज जी एक्सप्लेन टू वर्स दैट वेन आवर लोड इज प्लीजिंग टू वर्स वन वेन वी आर प्लीजिंग टू आवर लोड इन दिस वे वी वुल बी स्वीट इन टू आवर एम बींग हर मीठा लाया मेरे प्रभ पाया सो इन दिस वे गुरु महाराज जी एक्सप्लेन इन टू वर्स दैट वेन आवर एक्शन आर प्योर दैट वी आर प्लीजिंग टू आवर लोड the only real person that benefits from that is ourselves our paramatma our wahi guru doesn't need anything from us our guru maharaj doesn't need our daswan that doesn't need anything from us it's our gift it's their gift to us that we are enabled to give this I did some research we we use the word peta when we put money maya na gordara golak we say peta the word peta has a really beautiful poetic meaning which has become lost to us and we should do well to bring it back beta actually means to return something wow guru maharaj is not increased by our gifts guru maharaj is not reduced by our withdrawals maharaj is explained to us har meetha laya mere prab paya that when our husband lord is pleasing to us we become sweet through the ability that we have to give han ji an din har lev lai then our whole focus changes on a din on a night din a day live lai on a din in this way our focus our concentration live means our focus our concentration is completely now on paramatma why guru without any efforts i spoke to a singani who had been going to my sister's gatha bibi gurudpreet kaur from malaysia and this singani we can say her first love is perhaps not gatha A first love is not listening to katha everybody has their own part in the panth some it will be seva some it will be langar some it will be kirtan some it will be looking after children and teaching them the way through daya and her first love is not katha though she has respect and enjoyment of it on a passive way it's not her she's not attached to katha in this way but what happened was she's going to be be good breath course katha as she's been in the UK for a few weeks now i think she's in scotland right now so much love emanates from her when she speaks that when i spoke to that singani last week she said i can't stop listening to katha an din har live lai we haven't got to force ourselves to because when we reach this avastha har chautri lav man sahaj paya in this way gurumukh miliya subai that guru sahib themselves showers the value of these things upon us we get to see the value of these things and then when we know the value of these things then what happens milia subai everything happens with intuitive ease and i would go to i would go to that home and i would see katha on the tv and i would take katha on the iphone guru pyari sad sangat ji it doesn't have to be an arduous path if we attach ourselves to that little bit of effort and we can get off the ground and get out of the stratosphere then there's no gravity that's going to pull us back and then orbiting and flying is no longer with any effort try and bring down the international space station now with any amount of effort it's going to be there until the hukum is otherwise but getting it into the space was the hardest part gurumukh milia subai it's all lift off of this earth this earth is where all the suffering is let's live in the clouds sungalla akasa ki kita aiyis mara says listening to the stories of those great ones in the sky you might be a kita you might be a worm in the ground but maraj says something so beautiful in japji japji sahib sun galla akash if you listen to those great ones in the sky kita aiyis that you will reach that place even if you're a kita in the ground just by listening guru pyari sat sangat ji we started by speaking about a droplet of water reaching the ocean now we've completely reversed it and we're talking about a worm reaching the sky what is this game through nature we can understand that the path really is one of joining with these teachings and allowing them to take us hanji man chindeya phal paya swami maraj is explained to us that in this fourth stage man chindeya the the desires man chindeya phal paya swami in this way Swami our master has completely fulfilled our mind's desires this doesn't this doesn't mean mind's desires in the worldly sense like i want to buy a new car it means the true 
deeper inner yearnings that we have that don't seem to be satisfied by anything in this world the deeper meaning of this is that that beragi that one who's fallen out of love remember so this isn't the mind of an ordinary person this is that mind of that person that has traversed that third stage of spiritual awakening that beragi so the manantindi afalapaya swami of that beragi who's fallen out of love of the world whose clutches of the world are no longer upon their back and that person who's got a pure mind in this way their minds wishes have become fulfilled har naam vaji vadai and now the naam of god is resonating and vibrating from within in such a way that it cannot be stopped even if you tried now that which we made so much effort to bring about into our life now is just vibrating from us from within in such a way that it can never be stopped and it's just flowing from every pore of our being and those words now we've heard before we will hear him again with a different understanding be gurumukh rom rom harati ave gurumukh for the gurumukh from every pore of their being the name of god is vibrating har prab thakur kaaj rachaya har prab hari apriya that one that is part and parcel of every molecule of creation hari apriya har prab da parmatma vai guru thakur da swami master kaaj rachaya they are the ones that have organized all of our affairs and we realize again and maraj is doubling down with his teaching be or sadhya karaj all of our affairs have been arranged by paramatma wahi guru tan hirda naam vigasi and that tan tan here means the soul bride all of us as we are aspirants to be all of us as we are, should be aspiring to become tan hirda within our own hirda within our own heart han ji tan hirda naam vigasi naam within our own heart naam vigasi that vigas that complete state of anand is now blossoming forth nanak pagata sada vigas maharaj is giving our mind the instruction we have this within you as a target to meet be nanak pagata sada vigas be the pagats are always in a state of bliss i was speaking to a gurumuk uh, about 3 months ago i was very I was very wrapped up in a legal case through my work that was causing me a great deal of stress and I was speaking to one of the elders and I said I'm really stressed this work load is really stressing me out I'm finding it difficult to concentrate on other things and compartmentalizing this is taking over a, a large part of my life and I'm really stressed out with this case and she said something to me and in the simplicity of the words of a gurumuk there is still jor garab khand ki bani jor that when those gurumuk speak there's such a joy in these words that they don't just give you a teaching they can give you bakshish they can change your state of being this is what it means to be in us in the company of a satsangi and she said to me she goes the bhagats of are those for the guru to take care of what are you worried about you're doing your part to se apne dharm wala kaam to se karde hai na why to se kyon darde hai and in that moment it wasn't a question it was a spell upon me and it completely changed my state of mind she says if not the bhagats then to whom will guru sahib look to have their sheltering in place if not those that are making that effort then to whom will guru maharaj look to give that sheltering in place not that i'm worthy to be called a bhagat because i'm not those that know me know that you're more likely to consider me a marvel fan than a bhagat <laughs> but the point is is that the simplicity of these words are that if we undertake the task that maharaj has given us then we give ourselves to maharaj in this way har meetha laya har prab paya that when we're pleasing to our lord through our actions har prab paya because we are doing that which maharaj has ascribed to us then why should we experience anything but sweetness why shouldn't we be by the grace of the lord instilled with that sweetness hanji जन नानक बोले चौथी लावे एंड गुरु महाराज एक्सप्लेन टू अस जन नानक बोले चौथी लावे द दिस फोर्थ लव हां जी हर पाया प्रभु अविनाशी दैट वी हैव फाउंड दैट वी हैव बिकम वन विद दैट लॉर्ड दैट इज अविनाशी दैट इज नाश तो रहे दैट इज विदाउट डिस्ट्रक्शन सो 
in this fourth stage of spiritual awakening, Guru Sahib has explained to us that that Paramatma that we have become face to face with in the second love, that Paramatma Vahiguru, that we have become a Bairagi as we've fallen out of love with the world in the third stage, we have now in this fourth stage met that Lord and become one with that Lord. Just as the streams will flow into the ocean and cannot be said to be a stream again, just as the water that merges with the ocean cannot be separated back out, in this way, Guru Maharaj is giving us that teaching be Nadia Atte Vaha Paveh Samunda Nat Janiya that we should forget ourselves, that as we marry our husband Lord, we should forget ourselves. But this is the way of pure love, this is the way of becoming timeless and becoming one with that Paramatma Lord that we are searching for in every aspect of our unconscious mind, in our subconscious mind, and in our waking mind. And in this way, Anandin Haralev Lai, our focus will reach this state of mind in the fourth stage of consciousness that Maharaj can bless us. So, Guru Pyari Sadhsangaji, what next? We have, by the blessings of Guru Ram Dasji Maharaj, learned about the four stages in spiritual awakening. We have learnt, and we go full circle back to what seems like so long ago, that the very first stage is Shub Icha. To have that pure intention to take a positive step, taram dardo, to become pakka within your own taram, that you're going to commit towards doing something positive. As we come here and learn and we listen, let's believe in that and act upon that teaching, nidhyasana, that we take that teaching, we enshrine it in our heart. And as we're going to finish off now, let's just recite the Guru's mantra just five times. The Guru's mantra is Vahe Guru. If anything will enable us, will enable us to be able to do this, to move forward, it is the Guru's mantra. And as we sit full of emotion before Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj, let's all together as Sad Sangat, say the Guru's mantra and say to Maharaj, Be Maharaj, please, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, enable me to take this first step. Give me that Amrit Vela, give me that Nam Simran, give me that Nirmal Paupaya, that pure fear that I can move towards you as we recite this Guru's Mantra together five times. Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Chotha Tan Tan Sahib Siddhi Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj Sodhi Sultan, the giver of all gifts. Let's memorize Suhi Mahalla Chotha Lava Dibani as it's referred to. Let's memorize the Shabbat. Let's listen to the Katha of the Shabbat. Let's recite Lava as part of our Nitanem every day. This is the instruction of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. Let's listen to the Katha. If you haven't already listened to the previous three Kathas on the Basics of Sikhi YouTube channel, let's memorize. Let's listen every day. Let's take the instruction in Shrine in our heart. We must have made many mistakes in trying to recite the Bani, in trying to do any 1% of Ustut of the Bani of Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. You are the Sad Sangha of Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. We ask for your forgiveness. Lekhe kathena chutiye khin khin pulan har bakshan har bakshle nanak pare otar Vahe Guruji ka khalsa, Vahe Guruji ki fateh.